Hey guys, we're going to go over the law of sines today. Um, and of course, you will need a calculator set to degrees in order to do this. So first of all, let's talk about um, the definition So um, and, and the formula, because there is a formula for it. So the law of sines uses angles and sides. And so what will happen is you have a triangle that looks like this. Let's call these the angles. And then the sides that go with them are always across from them. So that's A, this is B, and this is C. Um, the angles are always capital letters, and the sides are always lowercase letters. So the formula is like this. You have the sine of A, and then the side A on top, the sine of B, and then the side B on top and then the sine of your angle C, and then the side C on top. Now you're only ever gonna need two of these, you never will use all three, and you're gonna set up proportions and cross multiply. Um, so you use the sign, the law of sines if you are given two sides and two angles. The difference is um, one, will have a variable. Um, so what that means is on like this first problem, we're given two angles and two sides, but one of the sides has a variable on it. Um, and it'll be the same thing for if you're searching for an angle as well, although none of these are searching for an angle. I thought we would have at least one, but we don't. Okay. So, in order to solve this, you need to put sides and angles together. So, in other words, this angle goes with this side. So, we'll put B over the sine of 74, and that's equal to 30 over the sine of 45. And you'll cross multiply. So B times the sine of 45 is equal to 30 times the sine of 74. Now we need to get B by itself. So we need to divide, because remember these are being multiplied, divide by the sine of 45 on both sides. And these cancel. Um, so this is what you're going to put in your calculator right here. Uh, you will, however, need parentheses over this entire numerator. You're going to need to do that. So whenever you have your calculator, first of all, always check. Make sure that it is in degrees, which mine is. So we're going to open parentheses, do 30 times the sine of 74. And we want to close two parentheses because the first set of closed parentheses is for the sine. The second set is for the whole numerator and then divide by the sine of 45. And let's see, I'm curious if it will give you the same answer without those extra parentheses. Let's see. I'm gonna do it just in case and see if it gives you the same answer. It does, so it looks like you don't actually need that second set of parentheses, you just enter it all. You don't need these. I erase that, okay. Um, so our answer is 40.78 or 40.8. All right, on this one, our 82 goes with D. And then our 24 is across from E, and we don't know what E is, but we have to know what E is. So we're gonna have 24 on top, but we need to know what E is in order to take the sign of it. So we're just missing one angle, we're given two, which means that you just subtract them from 180. So 180 minus 40 minus 82 is 58. Oops, there we go. So this is 58. Cross multiply D 
times the sine of 58 is equal to 24 times the sine of 82. We need to get d by itself, so we divide by the sine of 58 on both sides. These cancel, and you just put all of that in the calculator. So we're going to do 24 times the sine of 82. You do need to close those parentheses, though, for sure. And then divide it by the sine of 58, and then those you don't. So you do need to make sure that you close that first set of parentheses. So that is equal to 28.02, which is just 28.0. All right, then this one, we have 80 goes with the x. So sine of 80 with x on top. And then this 40 goes with this 12. So sine of 40 with 12 on top. And then you cross multiply. So x times the sine of 40 is equal to 12 times the sine of 80. You need to get x by itself, so divide both sides by the sine of 40. These cancel. And then you just enter all that into your calculator. So we have 12 times the sine of 80 divided by the sine of 40. 18.38, which is 18.4. All right, over here, 52 goes with our x, so sine of 52. I apologize, my phone is obnoxious. <laughs> so the sine of 52, oh, oops, and then the x goes on top. And then um, the 20 goes with this angle, which we don't know. So in order to find out that one, we do 180 minus 52 minus 91. And that is 37 degrees. So it's the sine of 37 over tw with 20 on top. Cross multiply. X times the sine of 37 is equal to 20 times the sine of 52. Divide both sides by the sine of 37. Cross these out, so you put that in your calculator. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that's 20 times the sine of 52 divided by the sine of 37. That's 26.18, so 26.2. All right, for this one, we have 60 goes with the X, so the sine of 60 with an X on top. And the only reason I write it that way is because I'm OCD and I like my X to be in the middle of my fraction. You could absolutely write the X first and put the sine of 60 underneath. It just helps my OCD if I can center that X on top of the fraction. All right, then this angle is the one that goes with the 35, which we don't know. So we're going to have to do 180 minus 35 minus 60. And that gives us 85 degrees for that angle. So the sine of 85 with the 35 on top. Cross multiply. X times the sine of 85 is equal to... 35 times the sine of 60. Divide both sides by the sine of 85. You don't need this, you just need to put that in your calculator. So we have 35 times the sine of 60 divided by the sine of 85 which is 30.42, so x 
is 30.4. Our last one, 17 goes with our x, so sine of 17 with an x on top. And 72 goes with our 25, so the sine of 72 with a 25 on top. Cross multiply, x times the sine of 72 is equal to 25 times the sine of 17. Divide both sides by the sine of 72. This cancels. Put all that in the calculator. So 25 times the sine of 17 divided by the sine of 72. And that's 7.68, which is 7.7. .7. And we are done with our notes.